Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about tech versus quant finance. Uh, this is going to be a little different than our, you know, what you're expecting here. Probably thinking, you know, numbers and stats and salaries, and we'll talk about that. But we're going to talk about jobs and kind of the differences between them a little bit, um, and some of my thoughts on working in both industries. Uh, so before we get started here, right, take a break. This is a disclaimer. I work in quantitative finance. I've been in quantitative finance. Um, I, I do not work for a top tech firm, so these perspectives are going to come from the quantitative finance side, though I have some interactions with the tech world, and we'll talk a little bit about those in this video, but let's just dive on in. Okay, so this video has been in the back of my mind for some time now. Um, I've been thinking about it, um, and then I went to a an event, we'll say, and it was a bunch of bankers sitting around from all these different banks, uh, and somebody asked the question, you know, what are we gonna do about top talent? Uh, how do we get the tech talent? We're really wanting like these top tech guys. Like we want a guy that's from Google or Facebook or one of these big firms. And we want them to come in and be part of the team and we wanna kind of like get these types of talent. So for me, I'm like, I don't understand what you're, like why you would want a tech person versus a quant person, right? A lot of times these people are interchangeable depending on your skill sets and whatnot. Sometimes they're different, depends what you're hiring for, but they're hiring for someone that can work on the quant finance side that has experience in a big tech firm. And they kind of want to think of this as like tech for some reason has better talent. I don't think this is the case, okay? I think both sides are awesome jobs. They're great careers. They both have top talent on both sides. One's not better than the other. I'm just here to say that um, I've considered working on both. So I don't think there's an advantage in that, but the response from all the other bankers right off the top, right, there's no thought from anybody was that, you know, oh, we can't hire tech talent. Um, it's just too expensive. Like if you paid more money, you can get those talent. So I don't agree with this. I don't think this is right. Um, the reason being is one of the top tech firms, not going to throw the name out here, they actually reached out to me and said, hey, we're looking for someone to run a data science team. Um, your background has a great fit. You have different skills than a lot of our current talent has, right? You come from the regulatory side on banking. Um, you could add in different structures, different expertise, different skills. Like, we'd love to set up an interview with you. So I said, fine, I'll entertain the call. Let's chat about it. And as I thought about it, I thought, oh, it'd be awesome to work for this company, right? I'd be managing an entire team of data scientists, right? fun new experience. Um, I'm down for the inter- the discussion, right? The entertainment of this, right? So I talked to them on the phone and they start going through like the interview and I'm talking to them about what I've done. It's HR at this point. And anyways, they start throwing out, you know, you'd have to live in one of these three cities. So, okay, fine. So what are the cities? Uh, I think it was like DC, um, Seattle and Silicon Valley. So I'm like, all right, fine. So what's the comp here? What are you guys looking to pay? They threw out the number and I looked at it and I was like, <laughs> there's no way, right? <laughs> there's no way you can pay me that much and I would move. Like I'm already making close to that now in a city that costs half the cost of your cities. So for you to match me, I want double what I'm making now for me to move to Silicon Valley or Seattle or DC, right? You're not going to pay me enough money to do it. So I'm like, all right, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't want the job. I don't really care what they're offering here, right? I have my life built, my structure, my career. I'm in banking. It's fine. Uh, went through the rest of the interview, ended up telling them I have no questions, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. And just hanging up. Like, I don't care. I'm not interested at this point. So the compensation part, I don't think is accurate. If a bank is out there telling you we can't afford them, they're too expensive, whatever, that's because as a bank, you're not paying enough point blank. You're paying quants and people that are qualified and most likely you're getting people that are underqualified because you're not paying good salaries to start with. So it's not that the tech side is too expensive. It's that that bank and those banks that are adding feedback, you're cheap and you're not treating your employees right. So throwing that out there to start off with. Salary should be comp comparable between the two. So I don't see a lot of difference in salary. Uh, me personally, I don't see a lot of difference in benefits from this fact of like, I get paternity leave, for example, uh, I work from home, I have 401k, I have time off, I have all that stuff, uh, right? I have most of it. Tech companies have some other advantages, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, so what's the real difference between tech and finance and kind of 
the two mentalities here. So talking to these bankers and trying to explain this and talking to the tech side. So the banking side is very structured. It's very regulated and there's rules and processes you have to follow by federal law. Okay. They will fire you. They could prosecute you, right? You have to follow these rules. Tech on the other hand, doesn't have these rules. And I, this leads me to the fact that I think tech in many instances is somewhat unethical. So this is kind of the dilemma I have, right? So tech doesn't have the structure, it doesn't have the dynamics, it doesn't have the regulation, it's using data to do all kinds of stuff. And while it's awesome and it's groundbreaking and they're doing some great things, is it ethical? Is it ethical the way the data is being used, processed, information is taken on you? I don't know. I can tell you in banking though, we couldn't even do the vast majority of what the tech industry is doing because it's against the law, it's unethical, and it's not right. Like you just should just know that in the back of your mind, okay? That's the first piece. So banks are super structured. Banks require you to follow st like statistical, academic supported methodologies. You can't just run out there and fit nonsense and then say, hey, look, it fits great. I'm using this new methodology. Things are great. The tech industry is more flexible in that sense that they don't really care a lot of times. They're just looking for results. Um, I think this is a massive weakness on the tech side. Like, you guys need to up your game. You need to get more academically geared people, people that are more scientific. They follow the scientific method. They need proof and evidence and logic and reason. They're not just going to throw things in and make things fit. And you can say, Dimitri, that's not how it works. <laughs> I've talked to these guys in the industry. Uh, I've interviewed with, again, these top firms. Um, I've seen the head of one of the departments on LinkedIn spouting nonsensical garbage consistently. And it leads me to believe the people on the top don't really understand modeling. They don't understand statistics. They don't understand what's going on. Um, the people on the bottom of a lot of these tech firms are bright individuals um, and they're you know, researching and doing different things. This is also the advantage of tech though. So banking doesn't allow us to explore. We have these structures in place and it's nice to follow structured processes. But at the same time, we don't have the flexibility of technology and exploration and like exploring. So when you explore ideas and models and structures and theories and things, right? you're not going to follow necessarily the one process, the one event. You don't use the same model over and over again. Banking is stuck in that track. They're old school. They don't understand you can try new things. Um, when you do new things, it scares people. Right? They're, they're just stuck in this box. And so this is why <laughs> finance can't hire uh, these really bright tech guys because in tech, I would love to be able to explore more in my job in banking, but I don't have those freedoms. Tech, you can explore more. You can do new analysis. You can like test methodologies. Like this violates all these assumptions. I don't really care, right? I want to see what's going on inside this model or this data structure. But again, they need to bring this back into a structured framework and figure out why this is happening. Why are the new methods good? Why are they bad? What's happening, right? So on the tech side, it's more flexibility. I think a lot of them treat employees better as well. So my big gripe and complaint with the finance industry as a whole and with banking... <clears throat> is that they think we are business people and quants are not business people. We're not finance professionals. We don't do finance or business. We do math and stats. And a lot of times you expect us to be creative and come up with new things and also to solve old problems that are more technical and take time to think and process and put the pieces together. Um, I don't like the banking side because a lot of times most banks now are saying we're not going to let you work from home. Okay. That's a deal breaker for me. Why? Because my job is stressful and you guys provide these dumb cubicle environments where everybody can see everybody else and there's no way to think. Like I'm trying to work and I've got people behind me talking, people in front of me talking. I go to a different room sometimes. So I go to like a conference room or I'll go to like another floor and sit like in a cafeteria and work. It's still noisy. There's still all kinds of nonsense going around and I'm trying to think and process and it's hard, right? I can code with my earbuds in and my music going and I can like get into the groove here, right? I'm getting going. It's great. But a lot of times people stop by and they're bugging you and interrupting you. And then if you have to do something that's theoretical or math driven, or I'm reading, for example, a textbook trying to figure things out, I need quiet. I need peace. Um, getting rid of the cubicles with like the carpet and giving us the flat environment is complete garbage. Banks are failing miserably. Uh, the tech industry, again, offers more flexibility. I know a lot of them allow you for, to work from home, which again, I still have the ability to do, but a lot of banks aren't doing this. So essentially shame on you for not giving your employees actual benefits because we're not geared towards business and flat environments. We need to think. 
and to think I can't see and hear everyone talking constantly. I need peace and quiet to work. So the tech companies have done a great job on that. They have like little rooms, conference rooms. They even have like napping pods and napping rooms. And they have like places for you to unwind and play games and build relationships with your colleagues. Banking needs to move that way. I can't emphasize that enough, right? You need to change the way you treat your quants. You need to change the way the industry works. We're not finance people. We're not business people. Don't treat us like that. You need to compensate us differently. So for a lot of those banks that are cheap, you need to raise the compensation. You want to keep good talent? You need to give them like working from home. You need to encourage team environments, team efforts, and team kind of working. But at the same time, you need peace and quiet to actually do your job. So <laughs> this is somewhat <laughs> my derailing of finance. But tech is an awesome in that. I like the fact that tech is trying to bring in good talent. They're trying to provide you with good resources and healthy food and exercise. We don't have gyms on site. We don't have childcare on site. We don't have all these benefits that a lot of tech firms do have. So when you step back from this, right, this is the problem, right? So the banks, this one bank went out and it hired, got a bunch of new technology and they're trying to get top tech talent and they can't figure out why and they're already paying enough, it sounds like, but they can't keep them. Like they'll get someone to come for six months and they leave. They don't have freedom, right? The finance industry is not giving you enough freedom. And if you've worked on the tech side, you have all this freedom and that freedom is awesome and it really helps you out. But I think both industries to be competitive, especially on the job markets, for example, and to be innovative. So banks now are moving towards the data science side, but you're kind of crushing people's spirits with the way you guys manage software, technology. Um, you're not giving the leeway to the employees to do exploration and to move forward, right? That's where the growth is going to happen in data science and machine learning. It's not going to happen from you just bringing someone in, plugging them and playing and thinking it's all going to turn out fine and dandy. So banking, I think, needs to give more freedoms. They need to treat their employees differently if they want to keep tech talent. And if you want to keep top quant talent in general, right? I'm not leaving my job. I get working from home benefits. I've had tons of offers to run departments and divisions and be a CEO for a small company in New York City. I'm not moving. I'm not leaving because you guys aren't comping me and treating me the way I want to be treated. So that's why I've stayed in my job, in my role, and that's why I've been tempted to leave to go to the tech side because I can run these teams, I can run these divisions, but at the same time, right, the big turnoff with tech for me is I need structure and dynamics and science. I expect people to hold you at that high rigor, right? I don't wanna be competing against other teams where they're not following essentially structured processes and rules, not scientifically backed. Um, so business analytics, for example, is not scientific in many ways strong stats backgrounds, strong statistics, and actual data science that links in stats is a crucial piece here. I think the tech firm's moving that way, but I do see a lot of nonsense coming out of tech. I do see a lot of nonsense coming out of finance as well, but trying to elevate everybody to a higher academic standard, a scientific standard with real results um, is crucial. Both jobs are awesome. Both have the pros and cons, right? You have freedom on tech, you have structure and more of an academic rigor on the finance side. But again, trying to blend those would make a better working environment for both halves. So that's my take on quant finance versus tech, more or less data science tech, you know, that kind of side. But anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <music>